I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we'll develop a concept to find area under a graph of a curve using limits. The equation here is find area under the graph y equals to x from x equals to 0 to x equals to 1. We are taking a very simple example. The idea is to understand the concept, right? So let's say this is the x and y coordinates. We'll sketch the line y equals to x. Let's say that's the line y equals to x. And we need to find area under the graph of y equals to x from x equals to 0 to let us say x equals to 1. So let's say this is, this is x equals to 1. So that's the area which we are interested in finding. So, so we need to find this area. Uh, you know, it's just a triangle, a right angle triangle, and finding area of a right triangle is very, very simple. So why are we doing this exercise? That's a big question, right? Now, area of this triangle A is equals to half base times height. Now, clearly, it is half. Base is one unit. And if x equals to y or y equals to x, the height is also one unit, so it is one times one, which is half, right? So we get half as the area of this triangle. The idea is that we are developing a concept here, right? I hope you remember when we found slope of a tangent line, if it was a straight line, it is simple. But what happens when you have a curved line, right? So if you have a curve kind of, kind of like this, now how do you find tangent at a point? We use the concept of secant approaching tangent. Slope of secant approaching slope of tangent. That's what we are going to here, do here. So we'll make rectangles here. And if we increase the size, if we increase the number of rectangles, then, uh, then the area will approach very exactly to the area under the curve. So that's the concept which you're going to see. Correct? So we are developing a concept using a very very simple example so you know that the area of this line y equals to x from 0 to 1 between x-axis and the line is half but we'll find this area using approximation so what we will do here is that this whole length from 0 to 1 will be divided into n rectangles we'll have n rectangles So if I divide from 0 to n the space in, in between in n rectangles, what is going to be the width of each rectangle? Width of each rectangle will be 1 minus 0 divided by n. Let me call this as delta x. So delta x is the width of each rectangle which will be 1 over n. Is that okay? What I'm trying to say here is that like this. So this space, let's say this is my first rectangle, right? This is my second rectangle. Likewise, let's say this is my third rectangle. Let me just put three. Let's say we have a few more. And that is some other rectangle in between. Okay. And then we have some more. And then this is my last rectangle. So let me call this as the nth rectangle. Now here, this one will help us to find a formula. We'll call this as ith general rectangle. And this one is the last rectangle, which is the nth rectangle. Is it okay? Now, as you can see here, if I divide all this space in n rectangles, width of each rectangle is going to be delta x, which is 1 over n, right? So, so the next point will be 2 over n. ith point will be i over n. And the nth point will be n over n, which is 1. Do you see that? It works perfectly fine. Area of the rectangle is length into width. Or you can say in this case, width into height. Now, how do I get height of this rectangle? Um, height of the first rectangle will be the value. If I substitute x here, I get y value. So I get height of the first rectangle is f of 1 over n, which will be 1 over n, correct? 
height of second will be this height will be 2 over n if I substitute this right so height will generally be given as f of this right side value so what we are doing here is we are making rectangles with the taking height as the right side so we are using approximation and taking right corner for height so if I do that and form rectangles I will have this kind of rectangle so the first rectangle will be kind of like this do you see that the second will be so if I use that as my height that is going to be my rectangle third will be kind of like this do you see that and this one ith rectangle will be this rectangle and the nth rectangle will be kind of like this do you see that obviously my rectangles cover more area than the area under the curve so I'm calling this as an estimate right so so we are saying this will be an estimate right and we are getting in for a higher estimate since you see this area is more than the area under the curve so that is the extra part of the area which we are going to add into the area so this is the extra part do you see this extra part all right so so it is an estimate and we know it is going to be higher estimate but if we have large number of rectangles n is going to be very large and the estimate is going to be fairly accurate right so if but if n is approaching infinity then accuracy improves now by how much we will compare with this value and figure it out that's what the exercise is correct so i hope you got the concept now let's see what is the sum of these rectangles okay so i'll use a summation sign for sum of rectangles so you say area is equals to sum of the area of each rectangle so i'm using the ith rectangle and then we'll say i varies from a one to n so there are n such rectangles so let's look into this what is the width of this delta x delta x is 1 over n so let me highlight this delta x is 1 over n so that is the width and what is the height of this height is in general f of i over n so that is the height correct so i can write down the area as width uh, which is let me write first delta x times height which is which we we are using the right corner correct so let me write this as now sigma of i equals to from 1 to n delta x is 1 over n right height is the value of the function for us it is straight line value of the function and we are using the right side at i over n at i over n is it okay that is what it is so what we can do here is substitute i over n in our equation which is given to us as y equals to x so so the area becomes sum of all these rectangles n of these 1 over n times now what is the value of the function at i over n if i substitute x as i over n i get i over n is that okay so this could be written as now 1 over n square is a constant i mean independent of i so i could take it out of the summation sign so i've got 1 over n square and then we have to sum all these i's that means the rectangles where i goes from 1 to n correct so this you could write as 1 over n square sum of natural numbers from 1 to n right sum of this is basically equals to 1 over n square and that is a series uh, if i substitute 1 to n i get 1 plus 2 plus 3 so on till n right and you know some of the series is how much it's an arithmetic series and the sum of the series is n into n plus 1 divided by 2 correct so that is the sum of the series correct so from here we can write down that it could be slightly simplified and written as n and n cancel so so what we get here is n plus 1 divided by 2n correct so you get n plus 1 divided by 2n so i could write this as area as equal to let me 
we could further simplify so n and n uh, let me write down here now so we could write this as n over 2n plus 1 over n right or i could write this as half plus 1 over n correct so that becomes the formula for area under this graph where n is the number of rectangles which we use in this case now if if n is 1 just 1 right so if you use one big triangle like this then we'll get an area which is very very approximate right so uh, we'll get 3 over 2 in this case right now <clears throat> now uh, so now let us uh, see what really happens if n is very large so now we are saying if n is very large we may get fairly accurate result is that okay so if n is very large in that case i'm sorry this is 2n 1 over 2n yeah okay if n is uh, if n is um, 1 then we get we get half plus half which is 1 which you can see area is 1 of a whole square correct if n is 1 okay if n is large what happens if n is very large let's say approaching infinity in that case 1 over 2n approaches 0 do you see that so if n approaches infinity 1 over 2n approaches 0 that is the concept of area as the number of rectangles if we increase them by a very large amount the area actually approaches the actual area of half right so for n approaches infinity we do get area a equals to half since 1 over 2n approaches 0 right so we get our formula area equals to half do you see that it is just the ex result which we were expecting do you see that i had to divide both by 2 and i just didn't write this right anyway so from this exercise what is very clear is that if n approaches large number we actually approach the actual area under the curve so instead of a line in our examples from now onwards we can take any curved surface form rectangles like this and if i take n as very large i'll get actual area under the curve so that is the concept which is going to help us from now onwards to find area under the curve especially we are working with continuous functions and we'll take few examples where all the values are positive to start with i am anil kumar and i hope that that this concept is well taken you can always share and subscribe to my videos feel free to post questions and also as an exercise take different values of n and find percentage error so as a question for you is for n equals to let's say 4 10 and 20 find percentage error in our calculation right so you'll find that as n approaches large value this percentage error is very less right i hope that helps thank you and all the best